Hey, feeling good, like I should. When in the blue, walk around the neighborhood, feeling blessed. Alrighty, on to the next lesson, 3.2.4. Today, we're going to draw connections between what we learned about multiplying fractions and, and uh, mixed numbers together with their decimal equivalents. So today we're gonna to focus on why we do what we do when we multiply decimal numbers together. Okay, so just like decade is another uh, name for 10 years, a decimal number is a number that can be written as a fraction whose denominator is a power of 10, like 100, 1,000, uh, 10, 10,000, million, all those powers of 10 are how our decimal system set up. Uh, because our entire number system is based on 10, decimals are very important and they are everywhere. Much of the math that you see in science class uses decimals. Of course, you also use them whenever you work with money. Today you will practice working with decimals using what you know about fractions to make sense of the standard algorithm for multiplying decimals. As you work with your team or as you're working along with me watching this video, keep these questions in mind. How are these decimals like fractions? What does place value have to do with our answer and does our answer make sense? Okay, so let's take a look at a real world situation. Howard went to the mall and saw a banner announcing all sporting goods, one tenth off. He saw a pair of rollerblade laces for only 40 cents, and he wanted to find out how much money he would save. With your team, or just on your own, watch this video, uh, let's or do it with me. Follow the steps below to help Howard determine his savings. So, obtaining a copy of this uh, resource page, I attach one to uh, the classroom. So, you could go ahead and print that off, or you could create your own, but to be honest with you, it's it, it can be a little bit tricky. I mean, if you're going to create your own hundredth grids, uh, which look like, oh, no, I don't want to fast forward. Well, maybe I'll show you. This is what a hundredth grid would look like. So it's 10 by 10. So there's a total of a hundred squares in there. You can draw that, but make sure you're neat or print one off and, uh, and, and use one. Okay. So it contains several copies of hundredth grids which you will be using throughout this lesson if you choose to. Not every single question requires the use of hundredth grid, um, but you could use them if you wanted to. Okay, so hundredth grids are larger versions of unit tiles. Unit meaning one, okay? So each side measures one unit divided into 10 equal parts. So if you take a look, here we are. This is considered one unit and so when you break it up and that's one tenth, two tenths, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten tenths across and ten tenths up and down. So this is one unit, this is one unit, this is one unit, this is one unit, and the entire square represents one square unit. So we're thinking what do each one of these smaller squares represent? That's one of the questions we're going to be addressing here. So with this being the case, what is the perimeter of each hundredth grid? If I were to add this unit, this unit, this unit, and this unit together, how many total units is that perimeter? And then what is the area? Well, if you are thinking like I'm thinking, the perimeter must be four units, right? And then the area, since area is found by multiplying the length times the width or the base times the height, one times one, means that this entire hundredth grid is equivalent to one square unit. So what each of the smaller squares in the grid represent, you're to answer this as a fraction, decimal, and percent. So this guy right here, what does that one represent? How would you label that? Well, I would label it as, as, a one hundredth, right? This is one hundredth the total area of the entire hundredth grid, okay? Which in decimal form would be one hundredth, zero point zero one, which by definition means one percent, okay? Why do you think these are called hundredth grids? Take a second to think about why you believe that this would be called a hundredth grid. 
Well, the reason is because it's divided into 100 hundredths, right? 100 equal terms, so it's a hundredths grid. The grid being like the horizontal and vertical lines, breaking it up into equal square units on the inside, each one being equal to one one hundredths. Okay, so take a look at this. 40 cents, the cost of Howard's laces, can also be written as 0 0.40, 40 hundredths, or 0.4, right? So just for sake of understanding how money works, 40 cents, which could be written like this, cent, right? Meaning like, uh, uh, well, I don't know, cents, uh, per cent, cent meaning 100, right? 40 hundredths uh, could also be written in this form with dollar signs, 40 cents, which if you just ignore the dollar sign and you simplify that, you can just write it as four tenths, okay? So 40 cents is the same as four tenths of a dollar. On your resource page, lightly shadow in like we've got right here, okay? So 40, one, two, three, four times one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. that is 40% or uh, 40 hundredths of the total square. But this would be easier if you think of it as four tenths because this entire column is one tenth, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths of the total. Next, let's factor in the discount. Mark we shade and label one tenth of the grid as shown here. So you're going to shade one tenth in this direction, which represents the amount that the discount was going to be, right? All items, it said, were one tenth off. Okay, so 10%, one tenth off. So shade in this direction. And now what decimal equivalent of this part has been full shaded or is more darkly shaded? That's going to represent the amount of the discount. So one tenth of four tenths is how much? It ends up being four out of 100. So four hundredths represents the amount of the discount. If we were to write these as equations using fractions, we would say one tenth times four tenths is equal to four hundredths. And if we use the decimal equivalent, we would say uh, one tenth times four tenths is four hundredths, but we've got it written in its decimal forms, right? 0. 0.4 times 0. 0.1 equals 0. 0.04. So how much money will uh, will Howard save on his laces? He is going to save a whopping four cents on those laces. Okay, so that's kind of the logic and how we're using these, uh, like what we did with the portion rectangles uh, when we were multiplying fractions together same idea but with those fractions we were allowed or with those yeah with the fraction problems with the rectangles we were allowed to use whatever our denominators were like if it was one half times one third we would cut it one half in one direction and one third in the other to get six equal parts but here we're dealing with numbers and decimal systems so we have no choice we must break them into tenths into hundredths into thousands because that's how our decimal system works. All right, so let's try another problem, right? Or while in the sporting goods store, Howard found some new running shoes advertised at 70% off as much, I'm sorry, they advertised to weigh only 70% as much as his old running shoes. So 100% would mean that they would weigh exactly the same. So since 70% is less than 100%, we're saying that the new shoes are going to be lighter than his old shoes. And his old shoes were eight tenths of a kilogram. So let's use our hundredths grid to find 70% of eight tenths of a kilogram. So here we have, this is for problem number 65, right? That's the one we're working on? Yes. Okay. So uh, here's the hundredths grid. And so in red, 70% would be 70 out of 100 squares, or 7 tenths, right? So each row is 10, so 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. Then the original shoes were 8 tenths of a kilogram. So if you think of each column as 1 tenth, shade in 8 tenths, which is 80 hundredths, 
and then what region has been doubly shaded in. Looks like it's uh, one of the dimensions, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight times seven is 56. So what do we have for our answer here? Seven tenths times eight tenths is equal to 56 hundredths, right? Hundredths is our denominator because 56 out of the total 100 have been shaded in. That would be 56 hundredths kilograms. Now let's write a decimal equation for this. Well, the decimal equivalent for 7 tenths is 0 0.7, and the decimal equivalent for 8 tenths is 0.8, and the decimal equivalent of 56 hundredths is 0 0.56. So 0 0.7 times 0 0.8 gives us an answer of 0 0.56. So our final answer is 56 hundredths of a kilogram, which is the same way we would say it in fractional form, right? So remember, the name for the fraction matches the name for the decimal when we convert the decimal to its fractional equivalent. So the new shoes weigh more or less than the old shoes? Well, we already said 70% of something is going to make uh, something less because 100% would keep it the same. So it's the new shoes will weigh less and it'll be 24 hundredths kilograms less because we would take the 56 hundredths Track that from the 8 tenths kilograms, which I converted to 80 hundredths so that we could take 6 away from, from that 0, right? Borrowing from our neighbor. And so this is the difference, right? So the old shoes weighed 8 tenths of a kilogram. The new shoes weigh 56 hundredths of a kilogram, which is a 24 hundredths of a kilogram difference. All right. So uh, if you print it off and use these hundredths grids, we have a couple more problems that you can use if you choose. But I have a feeling once you see the shortcut, you're going to realize, hey, wait a minute, we can do this much quicker, much more efficiently if we don't use these grids. I fully support that if you understand it. If using these grids help you understand how to get to an answer and you understand how to use these grids, then I encourage you to continue using them. All right. Well, let's think about mixed numbers. Uh, another way to think about decimal multiplication is by using this generic rectangle that we used when we were multiplying mixed numbers earlier in our lessons. What multiplication problem is represented by this generic rectangle shown at the right? Well, this is 2 plus 0 0.3, right? So that would be 2.3. And this is 1 plus 0 0.4, so that's going to be 1.4, so when you multiply 2.3 times 1.4, that is the problem that this is modeled. So your task now is to take this, and this is going to be 2 times 1, 2 times 4 tenths goes here, 1 times 3 tenths goes here, and 4 tenths times 3 tenths goes here. But we're writing them in decimal form. Go ahead and fill in each one of those and then write out the math problem that you would have to solve in order to figure out what is the answer to 2 and 3 tenths times 1 and 4 tenths, okay? Go ahead and pause and, and fill those in, figure them out, and then when you're ready, unpause. Okay, so 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 3 tenths, I'm sorry, 1 times 3 tenths is 3 tenths. 2 times 4 tenths would be 8 tenths. And 3 tenths times 4 tenths is 12 hundredths. So we would add 2 plus 3 tenths plus 8 tenths. Why do I have a dot there? I don't like that dot thing. It bugs me. Get out of there. Okay. Uh, plus uh, 12 hundredths. So write the total area as both a sum and of a product. So if we're writing it as a sum, we're adding all those numbers together to get 3 and 22 hundredths. If we're writing it as a product, and go ahead and check this. Uh, you can check on your calculator if you wanted to. Actually, let me just show you what, because some of you may still be a little confused by this. Remember, when you're adding numbers together, there was a rule that we learned about lining up the decimal whenever you add numbers together. Because you've got to add together like, this is two hundredths, right? This is zero hundredths, zero hundredths, zero hundredths. 
So adding all the hundreds together, you get a two. This is three tenths, eight tenths, and one tenth. You add up all the tenths together, and you get 12 tenths, which is a little bit more than one. So we'll just write the two here and carry the one over here. And now that one goes in the column with the two and these three zeros to give us a total of three ones. So three ones, two tenths, and two hundredths. We have to line up decimals anytime we're adding decimal numbers together. So what that means is since this original problem was 3 times 1.4, the 2.3 times 1.4 has to be equal to 3 and 22 hundredths. So this presents a bit of a problem, right? Because you are taking 2.3 times 1.4 and we want to line up decimals, right? But that does not work when you're multiplying fractions. I'm sorry, when you're multiplying decimals. Just the same as it didn't work when you were multiplying fractions together. We're not going to say that 3 times 4 is 12 and 2 times 1 is 2 and say our answer is 2.12. That's not how this works at all, okay? So let's go ahead and work through the standard algorithm. We would take 4 times a 3 and we learned write the 2 here because the answer is 12 and carry the 1. Then we multiply 4 times 2, which is 8, and then add the 1 to make 9, and we've completed that first row. We're done with the 4. Then we work over to the 1, and because that 1 is in the next place value, we had to hold our place. So this became 1 times 3 is 3, and 1 times 2 is 2. And at the end of this algorithm, we added straight down, and we had to figure out something to do with the decimal. Did we line up the decimal? Is our answer supposed to be 32.2? That doesn't make sense, because if we were to estimate our answers, 2 times 1 is 2. Our answer has to be somewhere in the 2, 3, 4 range at the most. It can't be 30-something. And so we can logic our way into figuring out what the correct answer is, where the decimal is supposed to go, simply by using a little bit of logic and estimation. Since this is almost two, this is a little bit more than one, the answer has to be somewhere around two or three. And so the logical place for that decimal is between the three and the two here to make it 3.22. So if you're thinking about the math, you can logic your way to where the decimal should go without being told a specific rule. Now, the question did say, where do you see the numbers from the standard algorithm in this generic rectangle? This part up here, what's going on here? Well, remember, when we multiplied the 4 times the 3, we got 12, and then we carried the 1. And then we multiplied the 4 times the 2, and we got 8, and then you added those together. So what eventually happens is this row right here is the sum of 12 hundredths and 10, or I'm sorry, and 8 tenths, even though we're not putting any decimals in yet. But we could put the decimal it would go right there, okay? And then this row is, stop it. This row is the sum of the two and the three tenths that we had up at the top, right? The two and the three tenths. And we put the decimal in, but it would go there. And then when you add straight down, that's how you're getting your three and 22 hundredths. Okay, so if the generic rectangle helps you with this multiplication process, go ahead and use that as well, if that's the strategy that works best for you. All right, so when multiplying decimals, how do you know where to place the decimal point? That's the million dollar question for this lesson, okay? So write two equations for multiplying 3 tenths times 16 hundredths. One should be uh, using decimals and one using fractions. So I decided to do this here. Why don't you go ahead and do that, pause, and write down the two equations and multiply them together. I guess they would be expressions, really, because I don't think we have to go get the answer yet. But if you want to write in the answer, go ahead. Okay, so did you say that 3 tenths times 16 hundredths is equal to 48 thousandths? Because 3 times 16 is 48, and 10 times 100 is 1,000? That would be the equation 
for this problem. What about the decimal equivalent? Well, the decimal equivalent for 3 tenths is 0 0.3, and the decimal equivalent for 16 hundredths is 0.16. So the decimal equivalent for our answer should be the same as 48 thousandths, which means the 8 has to be in the thousandths place, so 0 0.048. So for this, you need to put a 0 placeholder in the tenths place. You got to remember to do that. It's just, it's important. Okay. So in part A, you multiply tenths by hundreds to get thousands. You always get thousands if you multiply tenths times hundreds. Why or why not? What do you get if you multiply tenths by tenths or hundreds by hundreds? Well, you are always going to get thousands if you multiply tenths times hundreds since ten times a hundred is a thousand. If you multiply tenths times tenths, you're going to get hundreds. And if you multiply hundreds times hundreds, you're going to get ten thousands. Okay? So you got to be aware of, of how to multiply powers of ten together. And really, if you remember the lesson from way back when, anytime you're multiplying powers of ten together, you just add up the total number of zeros and write that as a part of your answer. So one zero, two zeros, you should have three zeros in your answer. Okay? Hundreds times hundreds would have a total of four zeros, and that's why it's ten thousands. When multiplication, when a multiplication problem is written using decimals, there's a relationship between the number of decimal places in the parts of the problem and the number of decimal places in the answers. So I would like for you to copy this down. Make sure you understand this. The total number of decimal places in the problem is equal number of decimal places in the answer whenever you are multiplying decimal numbers together. So, 16 hundredths has two decimal places. 3 tenths has one decimal place, which means 1, 2, 3, your answer must have three decimal places. 16 times 3 is 48, so sometimes we need to put in zero placeholders to make certain that we've got the appropriate number of decimal places in our answer. And that is the main rule that we have to remember to follow whenever multiplying decimal numbers together. And if you practice multiplying using the equivalent fractions for each one of these decimal numbers that are being multiplied together, you'll kind of see why. All right? We got thousands here, so we need three decimal places so the eight can be in the thousands of your answer. So hopefully all of this is making sense for you so you you know, once you understand it and it makes sense, then you really don't even have to think about it anymore. It's just the logic takes over. All right, so this is the last problem. What I'd like for you to do is copy down each one of these problems, solve it using the, uh, the fraction versions of these numbers, then solve it using the decimal versions and write both your decimal and your fractional answer. Okay, go ahead and pause. When you're ready, we'll do the big reveal. All right, let's see what we got for problem A. If we start with the decimal, we learn, right, that we multiply the numbers together and you count one, two decimal places. So three tenths times six tenths has to be 18 hundredths. And when you convert them to fractions, you see exactly 18 hundredths. So our answer for this is 18 hundredths. Uh, now, I did not simplify that fraction, I, and that's not really the point of this lesson, is to write those in simplest form. It's to see how the fraction part and the decimal uh, number are equivalent to each other, so I did not change that to 9 over 50. In a future lesson, I will be expecting you to simplify fractions, but not today. Okay, 5 tenths times negative 4 tenths. Well, first off, we know our answer is going to be a negative, right, because it's a negative times a positive. It's always a good idea, once you realize whether your answer is positive or negative, to put that symbol where your answer is going to be so you don't forget about that. But 5 times 4 is 20, so that becomes 20 hundredths, which could be written as 2 tenths, and it would be negative 2 tenths. And in fractional form, 5 times negative 4 is negative 20, and 10 times 10 is 100, so negative 20 hundredths, once again, would be the same as negative 2 tenths. And then a negative times a negative will give us a positive answer. So 7 times 2 gives us 14. And that ends up being 1400, right? Because of two decimal places. 
And then negative 2 times negative 7 is positive 14, and 10 times 10 is 100. So our final answer is 14 hundredths, 14 hundredths. Okay, so hopefully all of this makes sense for you. Uh, please make sure you show your work and make your corrections on your homework if you make any mistakes. Take care. Hey, feeling good, like I should, when in the blue or